Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Isaiah Ronald 77 and today is a wonderful day in Destiny, man. I am so excited for this day because this day Bungie has released a patch, a 13 gig update for Rise of Iron coming out September 20th. Today is September 8th and in the meantime, while we're waiting for the Destiny maintenance to be done, we got some patch notes for some weapons and I am excited about these changes. Well, most changes. Actually, no. All changes. I'm excited for all changes <laughs> because my playstyle likes all these changes. I don't know if it's not for you or whatever, but I I'm sorry, man. I mean, some things did seem right, some things did seem wrong, but not everybody's going to agree on the patch notes. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's get into it, man. The first one, I'm a Titan, and I'm just excited for this one. So, the weapon all Titans no one love. Just kidding, nobody really likes this weapon. Uh, the Fabian Strategy, man. This this one's an, a, an exotic auto rifle, and it's exclusive to the Titans. What did they do to buff this? And I, I'm excited about these changes. So, the Fabian Strategy, it wasn't a very good weapon. Um, the, the fire rate was just way too fast and too low damage, and the perk the exotic perk wasn't that great you had to be close in shotgun range for it to activate and on top of that it decreased the damage once the perk activated and it was just a train wreck so what they do they want you to fire from a distance now so in they increased the base range by 16 percent and the stability by 44 percent you know how good that is for a fast firing auto rifle stability and range that's just awesome so what else they do Kills with this weapon now automatically load a portion of the magazine so you can keep on firing. That is not only good for PvP, I know what you're thinking, you're just thinking about PvP, but PvE, can you imagine destroying a crap ton of thralls, dude? You can just lay down the trigger and never let go. Oh, it's going to be insane. So Bungie, really, really good change with this. Now I just hope you would change something with the exotic perk. Um, the exotic perk is to where you get close to enemies and it fires faster but it also decreases the damage well in my opinion if you kept the damage same throughout the, throughout the entire fire rate so like once you get close to an enemy it um uh, it does like the fast fire rate sticks to it and the damage stays the same as um it would without the exotic perk being uh activated so if that's not confusing enough what else do we got? Thorn. What are they doing to Thorn, man? <laughs> you don't want to go back into the Stone Ages, man. The Thorn was just terrible. Or should I say the Dark Ages, not the Stone Ages. The Thorn versus the Last Word. So what are they doing to Thorn? Well, they reduced the range by 25%. I know it seems like a bad thing to do, but they are bringing it, bringing it to Year 2. So that's, you're going to see that in uh, Trials of Osiris, definitely. But... The range is reduced by 25%, and you still got that tick damage. So, yeah, Thorn. It, they just don't want it to happen again. They don't want the whole, like, six months of Thorn and Last Word dominating. I mean, I know Pulse Rifles were good at that time, but Thorn, man, two shot, you're done. You were done. But, uh, yeah, what else do we got? So, what we got next is the Universal Remote. Now, they kind of, uh... They, they changed this weapon a lot. So what'd they do to it? The exotic perk range bonus was reduced by 75%. That's a lot of reduction in range for a shotgun. That It's going to have like the range of the in times of need. Now if you don't know what that legendary is, it's basically the shotgun with the legendary shotgun with the most least amount of range there could be on a shotgun. So... This is just paper, I don't know if it's really gonna really affect it that hard, but 75% it tells me that that shotgun is really gonna get hurt. So, uh, what they did kind of a little buff to it. What they did was uh, they increased the rate of fire, but at the same time they did buff it, but then they nerfed the rate of, uh, the rate of fire damage. So, what I mean by this, they decreased the damage as a secondary effect. Um, yeah, <laughs> goodbye, uh, Universal Remote. And hello, Drake's Promise. This gun was buffed. I am so happy this gun is getting a buff because this gun really needed a buff. Like, when I say really needed it, this gun needed it because it's an exotic and should be exotic. 
Well, what they did to this gun was increase the damage by 8%. I love it because this gun in the beginning when it was first released in House of Wolves, this gun was terrible. Like when I say terrible, it wasn't even usable in PvE. Like I wouldn't even go to Cosmodrome Patrol and use this weapon. It was that bad. It did get a buff in the April update, but the April update didn't really help it at all. It gave it tracking rounds, but it, it's just it was still wasn't a good weapon, but Hopefully this buff by uh, the damage getting increased by 8% and the magazine getting an increase to 3 will help it out a little bit. I mean 8% seems good enough to me. So the next one on the list of buffs and nerfs to exotics is Touch of Malice. This gun was uh, very very good in the Oryx raid, especially with the Titan's Bubble Blessing of Light. But it looks like that's going away because the Touch of Malice will not work with Titan Blessing of Light because if you try to use it with Titan Blessing of Light it'll just remove the Blessing of Light which is a good thing and a bad thing because later on probably in the newer raids uh, people are gonna figure out that the Touch of Malice does a lot of DPS especially with the last regenerating bullet doing extra damage and not causing damage to you but the Blessing of Light shield and uh, the DPSing the bosses a lot more and causing more damage causing them to break the encounters like Gallahorn did in year one. So that's why I could see they nerfed a touch of malice there, but who's gonna do Oryx anymore? And it's really not gonna be useful except for the Oryx part where you're in the aura and it'll all be good, so don't worry about it. Now next, probably my favorite one of all the exotic buffs is the No Time to Explain. The intrinsic perk is now Headseeker. If you don't know what Headseeker is, it says uh, the description of Headseeker is causing body shots, uh, causing damage to the body, increases headshot damage to your opponent. So that's very good for the No Time to Explain because that gun was a 3 burst, so hopefully this will turn it into a 2 burst. We don't know. Now I like this buff here. Bungie is showing some love to the Bullying Gemini, or however you want to pronounce it. I hope that was the correct pronunciation. But what they did to this weapon is change the intrinsic perk to high caliber rounds. Hopefully this will make it harder for your opponents to hit you while you're shooting them in the head. So that's a good buff to the Boolean Gemini. So all these weapon changes are very very nice and uh, I kind of like them all except maybe for a few. But um, Bungie has time and uh, room for improvement. Not everything is going to be perfect. So uh, weapon changes weren't the only changes that were going to be changed. So uh, let's get into those changes. So what else did they change? They changed weapon perks. So this is a good thing because a lot of the weapon perks were not that great. Starting off with uh, a little bit of a general type deal of perks is uh, the magazine perks now give you range bonuses. So uh, it's a kind of a trade-off. You kind of lose some handling with it, but hey, you get more bullets and more range. So that's a good thing, especially with hand cannons and the bloom. The more range you have, the more accuracy you got. So that's a good thing. Uh, this perk called Take a Knee, it now activates after 0.5 or half a second after crouching. Um, it added flinch reduction, which is 25%, and increased down sight speed by 25%. So you're going to be aiming faster, and the perk will activate faster after you crouch. Exhumed. Now this perk, I think, is going to be great because it added an extra 5 seconds to the uh, effect it had like it before it was 10 seconds so now it's 15 seconds and uh, every time I was about to kill somebody with the exhumed, exhumed it felt like it ran out so adding an extra five seconds is very useful cascade the functional change it melee kills automatically reload a portion of the magazine so that's very useful so you don't have to reload just like the Fabian strategy when you get a kill it'll reload the portion of the magazine and uh, yeah you just keep on firing um, surplus now increases um, the amount of ammo capacity you can hold. That's good. Grave Robber. Increased proc chance to 25% was 20%. Now I don't remember what Grave Robber does, but um, hopefully it's a good uh, perk now because of the buff. Um, Gorilla Fighter. Now this is very interesting. Increased stability and range bonuses by 200%. That is crazy. 200% so like you're gonna have like no uh, recoil or no range issues with Gorilla Fighter 200% is a lot of percentage okay people so like when you shoot you're gonna have like no recoil that's gonna be insane unflinching 
Now this was a uh, perk on snipers that I hated because like you try to shoot a sniper and like they wouldn't flinch and they get easy headshots on you. So what they're doing to this is they're decreasing the efficiency of the perk from 25% flinch reduction to 15% flinch reduction. So you're going to see a little bit more scope shake each time you get shot while aiming down the sights with the sniper. And lastly, Firefly. Possible fix for crash related to special effects tr triggered by Firefly perk. If you were to shoot a enemy up close and the Firefly perk procced, it would uh, sometimes crash the game. So all these changes are very, very useful and I like them all. So thank you for that Bungie, especially the Firefly one because um, I, I hated when my game crashed. I mean, it barely happened, but it did happen a few times, especially during a raid when we were about to finish a, uh, a boss encounter and I crashed and we basically failed it because of the crash. Yeah, not not a good day. But uh, those were good changes. I loved it. Thank you, Bungie. What's next? So Bungie went and reviewed all the weapon classes and blanket nerfed and buffed them. And I'm just going to read what changes they did to them. So starting off with my favorite weapon types, auto rifles. They reduced the maximum size, uh, magazine size for the highest rate of fire auto family. So doctrine of passing type weapons and... Uh, yeah, they will have less ammo in their magazines. Um, for, you know, like answering core type weapons, mid rate of fire type deal, um, they increase the damage by 1.5%, so you should notice a damage increase in the answering core type deal uh, rate of fire type weapons. Next up, pulse, rif pulse rifles. What do they do with pulse rifles? They increase the rate of fire for the Hawke pulse rifle, Lad Model D, I can't pronounce that one, um, but... Also, they increase the damage for middle rate of fire family pulses like Nerwin's Mercy. They increase those by 2%, so you should see more damage, but they will still be 3 bursts, I believe. Um, hand cannons, what did they do to hand cannons? They didn't really buff or nerf hand cannons, it just did some bug fixes. Uh, I just read it to you anyways. They fixed an issue with the hand cannon Zalo's Bane rate of fire stat would, would display in, incorrectly. So that's a bug fix. What else did they fix? Fix an issue where the Taken King Vanguard and Arms Day hand cannons down and out 00 0-0 and the KU Matok HC4 stats would display incorrectly. So like I said, just bug fixes. Shotguns. What they do to my babies? Well, they increased the stability for the Immobus to start off with and they tightened the spread on it. So that's very useful. And um they also increase the damage uh, for those type of shotguns and mobus type uh, shotguns by 2%. So that's uh, always welcome. So the mobus will do more damage and have more range. Uh, hopefully it'll be more useful for Defender Titans. Um, they also reduce the spread uh, angle penalty on shotguns with the perk full auto. Uh, the invective was not affected. So what I mean by this is the a shotgun that has a perk called full auto on it each time you shoot it it would spread out more of the bullets or the pellets uh, excuse me and um, they they're just gonna tighten up now with the full auto perk so that's useful sniper rifles what they do to sniper rifles these weapons I'm sorry man I hate these weapons now before you call me a no skill person and get good scrub type deal sniper rifles in my opinion I don't like in year two because they had high impact sniper rifles that had a whole bunch of aim assistance as in year one where it was reversed high impact sniper rifles didn't have any high aim assistance they had low aim assistance while the low impact auto or, or sniper rifles had high aim assistance now in my opinion more damage should take more skill rather than less damage uh takes more skill so what they choose what they what did they do to sniper rifles well, the metal impact type deal snipers, so 1,000 yard longbow LDR type deal, they reduced it by 6.95%. So what this did was they can no longer one hit supers, okay? High armor supers. So like if a Titan is maxing out his armor, you can't one shot him with a sniper in the head. I'll probably bring him really low, but I won't one shot him no more. So that's a good thing in my opinion. Because supers, they don't feel super if you get one shot in the head by a sniper. They uh, they also reduce the target acquisition for LDR 5001 and the uh, longbow synthesis. 
to bring it in line with other snipers to the middle rate of fire family. So they increase the starting strength for aim deflection or flinch uh, when players take damage while scoped um, starting from 30% uh, going to 50. So yeah, you're going to be having a hard time hitting your target if you're getting shot with a primary. So I think that's good. Uh, the overall sniper ADS aim deflection multiplier was increased by 1.9 to 1.85 or was 1.85. So you are going to have a harder time hitting your target. Okay, that's what they did with snipers. I am fine with that. You should be able to still snipe, okay? If you can't, then I don't know what to tell you. Just try and keep on sniping. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. I suck at sniping, and I'm trying to get better. But I will be using more fusion rifles. Actually, speaking of fusion rifles, would they change in fusion rifles? The accelerated coil... Uh, correctly reflects damage reduction now on UI stat bars so they're not nerfing or changing or buffing the fusion rifles it's just bug fixing um, they did no gameplay effect only UI effect so it's gonna tell the stats uh, correctly this time they fixed an issue where stat bars on the Tushan Ridge displayed incorrectly Okay, fusion rifles, that was good. Bug fixes. What'd they do to rocket launchers? Well, they extended the damage fall off distance on cluster bomb perks explosions. So, cluster bombs, like on the Hez Inventions from Vault, uh, for Vault, Vault of Glass, should be uh, more viable than grenades and horseshoes. Um, grenades, actually, grenades and horseshoes perk proc radius was reduced from 1.3 meters to 1 meter. So, from 2.0, they actually nerfed it because in House of Wolves, the. Uh, Perks, uh, Grenade and Horseshoe actually was really OP and they downed it to 1.3. Now they're downing it again to 1. But the truth was not affected. Now I really don't think Gallahorn was affected either because its hidden perk was Grenades and Horseshoes. Machine Guns. What they do to Machine Guns? They increase the damage on highest rate of fire machine guns by 4%. I agree with this uh, buff because in PvE they uh, were basically useless especially with all that ammo and uh the ammo reduction uh, with the April update wasn't really that well or worked well for any of the machine guns. So now we got with all the freaking weapons done, what is the last thing? Activities. Let me tell you what we got in activities. So the public events are going to be more, more, really, really helpful. So I'm just going to read through what they changed. So the first completion of daily uh, public event gold, uh, you get one legendary once you're level 40, though you can't be below level 40, and you get 15 uh, more destination materials, you get 15 legendary marks, you get 5 modes of light, very low chance of an exotic shard, I like that, uh, and 4 times XP, or 4k XP, uh, core, subclass gear, and uh, yeah, you'll be leveling up faster. Um, you get 25 times the guard, Vanguard rep, so that's very useful. Um, so, say if you completed it once, what happens if you complete it again? You get um, 200 Glimmer, you get a chance of 2 to 5 destination materials, you get a chance of 1 to 2 modes of light, 1.5 XP, or 1.5 K XP, excuse me. You get a green or blue engram, and 25 Vanguard rep. Uh, what else do we got for activities quest quest menu has been changed and renamed to progress record books have been moved from the materials and in inventory menu to their own location in the progress menu quest bounty and reputation displays have been adjusted so yeah when you go in your menu you're gonna notice a huge change okay crucible so I'm not really gonna read what happened in the crucible you guys can figure it out yourself because I want to leave a uh, few things for you guys to find yourself so uh, yeah, this was the patch notes for the Rise of Iron update. I'm very excited for it. You should too, because uh, if you pre-ordered, you knew, I already know you're excited. Because Destiny is an amazing game. I pre-ordered like three months ago. As soon as I had the money, I was like, bam, pre-order. Because Destiny is my home game. I love it so much. And all these changes, I can't wait till seven o'clock. It's almost seven o'clock. It's about an hour away, and it's gonna be fun. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and be sure to check out my other videos. I love you guys very much, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed that music too. It's a little nod to the title screen music I put up earlier. Peace out.